This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Welcome back. So let's go through and just bring to a close or start to bring to a close how we recognise performance obligations that are satisfied over time. What we have seen so far is the process that we go through in order to record the amount within the statement of profit or loss. So we looked at what were those three steps? Can, can, can you remember what we've done so far? Step one was, yep, excellent. Work out the total profit or loss. Step two, look at the stage of completion. Uh, and then step three, you've got it. Excellent is to look at the amount in that statement of profit or loss. What we're going to do now is add a fourth and final step to that. And that is to go through there and have a look at what happens within the position statement, within your statement of financial position. Because as you're incurring costs, uh, labour costs, materials costs, you're effectively developing an asset, an asset that is going to be transferred ultimately at the end of the contract to your customer. So how do we work out the value of that asset within the statement of financial position? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and the key thing is, is that you need to use the figures that you've got for, from other parts within any question. So what you've got there is you've got, is it your costs to date? So as you incur the costs, your labour, your materials, that's what you've recognised so far. That's what's physically making your asset grow and grow and grow, isn't it? So you start off by looking at your costs to date. However, don't forget that you're looking to sell on that asset. So it's actually worth more than the cost that you incur. So what you go through and do there is you add on any recognised profits that there may have been to date. You will deduct any losses and it, and it will be one or the other at the point in time that you're looking at. It will either be 100% of the losses that we're deducting or the profits that you've incurred to date. Uh, you then need to go through and that, if you like, gives you the value of what this asset is. If you were to transfer it on to somebody else at that point in time. However, what you're going to do is as you go through the process of constructing your asset, you're going to get money in or you're going to invoice your customer for amounts that are due. Now, if you invoice your customer, what effectively you are doing is you're asking them for the money back. So it's an asset, but it's a different asset to this contract asset that you are in the process of constructing. So what we go through and do there is you will deduct any amounts that are then transferred through to your receivables. So you've still got, if you like, the same value of the asset in the accounts, but you're just showing it in a, in a more accurate position within your financial statements because that receivable is a lot more liquid than that overall contract asset that you are constructing. So remember, you start off with your cost to date, you add on any profits to date, you deduct any losses and you deduct any receivables. OK, there we go. That's it. It's, it's a pro forma sat there that effectively you just need to learn. And if you can learn that pro forma, you're going to be in a good position within the exam. So should we have a look at it? Let's go back. Uh, and before we do the example that, that, that's in the notes, let's go back and have a look at the questions that we've seen so far. Uh, so there we go. Example number five that we did a couple of videos ago. Uh, we worked out the figures that are in the statement of profit or loss, didn't we? So that was there. We had the revenue of 15, the cost of 9.2 and the profit of 5.8. Uh, if we draw in part four on the statement of financial position. So remember, this was a profitable contract. So you look at your costs to date and you add on your profits. There was no additional information given to us within the question uh, about any amounts that have been invoiced to the customer. So we're quite simply looking at the cost to date plus the profits. So what we have there, the profits to date will be the 9.1. So you've got your profits of 9.1. So again, within the FR exam, make sure that you use 
your own figure. Even if you've got the wrong number that you've calculated, use your own figure and you will get the credit. Then what you've got in terms of your costs to date, your costs to date were given within the question. Uh, they were there, were they at the 20? There we go. Excellent. So we can take those costs to date. Those costs to date were there at 20. So I have my contract asset sitting there in current assets. Because effectively, it's similar to like an inventory balance, isn't it? That you're constructing an asset ready to sell on. Uh, that's at 29.1. Nice and straightforward. Okay. Uh, if we go through and have a look at the second question that we looked at, example number six. So within that, we worked out that it was a loss-making contract. We've seen that the loss... Oh, careful. We've seen that the loss was there at five. So what we've got there is now step four. We're looking at the figures on the SFP. So as at that point in time, we look at the costs that we have incurred to date. And then we deduct any loss. Well, the loss that we've made is five. Uh, the costs that we have incurred to date were there as 25. So that's within my calculations. There they are within the actual question itself. We have the, is it our contract asset? Is that there of 20? And again, that just sits there on the statement of financial position within your current assets. Excellent. So what you've got is you've now looked at this four stage process, haven't we? Working out whether or not the contract is profitable or loss making. Step two is to look at the stage of completion. Step three is to look at the figures on the statement of profit or loss. So just for that year ended, for that 12 month period. And then on the fourth and final step, you're looking at the statement of financial position. And that statement of financial position is looking at a point in time. So it's looking at things cumulatively from when we started constructing this asset for our customer up until today's date. So it's going to span at least one accounting period, if not more, isn't it? Excellent. So what you've then got within the notes is you should have an example. So what I'd just like you to do, I don't want you to get into this habit of just listening to me uh, do question after question after question. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to attempt the question yourself. So what you can see there is it wants you to prepare extracts from the statement of profit or loss and the statement of financial position. So I'd like you to go through those four steps. Try and answer the question. If you get things wrong, it doesn't matter. And then when you've answered the question, then come back and look at the next video. Don't cheat. I can see you. Yeah, work the question and then watch the video. Don't watch the video whilst doing the question. Got it? Sure? Excellent. I'll see you all soon.